Hi, we're Jess and Jake, and we're converting this school bus into our very first home so that we can travel the U.S. and Canada the year after we graduate from college. We're back after a very long hiatus with this brand new bus. Today, we're going to be doing a full-length comparison between the new bus and our old one. So this is a 2004 Thomas Built HDX Series school bus. And today we're going to be comparing it to this 2009 Bluebird Vision school bus. So this is a flat nose, full length, 40 foot bus, which means we are gaining significant length compared to our old one. Why don't you come on in and we'll show you inside. So because this is a flat nose bus and it's a full length, we are gaining about 10 more feet of interior space in this build. And that might sound great, but originally Jake and I were shooting for around 30 feet to have easier drivability with the bus, but we can't turn down a good bus just because we're gonna have way more living space. So with our old bus, we went with a 37 foot dog nose style. And the reason we chose this type was because this five feet in the front helps with any type of impact that could have happened with a car accident. And we felt that this would be a lot safer than a flat nose where the driver could be immediately impacted. Let me show you inside and we'll check out the interior specs. So because of that buffer area and the dog nose on the front of this bus, we only actually have 28 feet of living space in here, as opposed to our new bus, which has around 37. So we are gaining a significant amount of square footage in the new build. One of the most important factors that you have to look at when buying a used vehicle is the mileage. This vehicle has less than 35 thousand miles. That is the closest to like new condition we have ever seen. Let's talk about the dash. These buttons over here are pretty standard. They're just in a different location. The wheel, however, is very comfortable for long distances because it's bigger and easier to hold on to. The gear selector here is actually a push button system instead of one you shift up and down with. Personally, I like it better because it just takes up less space on the overall real estate of your dashboard. The gauges are all pretty much standard, but they are far easier to read because these are larger and have bigger text on them. And ironically enough, you have to pay attention to the size of the windshield because the windshield in this flat nose bus has significant more visibility in all around angles. So this bus right here sits at 220,000 miles more or less, which is still pretty average when you're looking at used school buses. You'll see a lot of them in that range. But when you compare it to the other bus sitting at a sixth of that mileage, I mean, you just cannot compare the two. So comparing it to our older bus, the only difference on this side is that there's a storage compartment here, which is useful and that is a fantastic feature. So moving on to right in front of you, we have our gauges directly behind the wheel, which is sometimes frustrating because with your hand placement, it can easily block the critical information that you need to know. Speaking of the wheel, this wheel feels a lot more like a car. Even though it's large, it sits at a weird angle that's familiar to your everyday driver. Over here on the gear selector, it's a traditional traditional one where you push it up and down, push button to engage, and it just takes up space on the dashboard when in a tiny home, all space matters. And lastly, the freaking windshield, dude. It's awful. There's not much visibility when you're trying to look downwards. And even though you have your front mirrors here, they're not really as effective as your own two eyeballs. Let's talk about door placement. There is so much variation with where these school buses place their emergency exits. And with our new bus, they placed it smack in the middle of the length. It's gonna be really exciting to see how we kind of feature this door in our build like layout plans because we can do so many fun things with having this extra opening on the side of our bus. So this bus does come with four different wheel wells. We honestly don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal to build around them just because we have so much extra length compared to our old bus. It's not that big of a deal. Welcome to the back of our bus. Right now, I'm actually sitting on top of the engine bay, and this is the emergency exit in the back area. So this was actually a huge deal for me, specifically when trying to find a bus. I was so adamant about having a bus that had a door on the back, and that's because I've seen all of the Instagram videos where people are laying in their beds and opening their doors, and that's what I wanted. But with the condition of this bus, we just couldn't say no. And honestly, this is a huge window it opens and we have some really fun ideas for this little nook area maybe making it another sitting area which is really nice on a tiny home and so I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this nook I'm okay with giving up the door 
So now we're at the old bus. This door placement was ideal. Not only do we have one door, but we had two. So this was the door to the wheelchair access ramp area. And this one was just your typical emergency exit. And the reason we liked this so much was because we would be laying in bed right here and we would have almost an unobstructed view of all the beautiful places we plan on visiting. So that was honestly such a perk with this bus, but you know, you gotta give up some things to have 35,000 miles. Now let's take a look at the inside. As you can see, we have no wheel wells on the interior, which is definitely a nice feature to not have to build around anything, but it's not necessary. So we bought it from the best person possible, a school bus mechanic specialist, okay? When they bought it, it was their intention to build it out. So they did a full inside, outside, left, right, up, down inspection in their own shop using their own tools. So we know it's absolutely a solid choice. Plus, again, it only has 35,000 miles, so it's hard to find anything wrong with that. So this Mercedes-Benz engine right here is completely dry, meaning that there's no oil leaks or any drippage like that, which is pretty common when you're talking about a used school bus. But we have none of that here, which is fantastic. With the engine being in the back of the bus and not inside or in front of like the dog nose, the noise is completely different. It's far more muffled. You don't hear it inside the cabin as much. And when you complete your build and have your engine turning on, it's a lot easier to dampen it when the engine is in the back like the configuration we have here. So the engine sitting in this dog nose is a 6.7 liter Cummings engine. The reason why we actually had to get a new bus is because this engine has a hole in the long block. It doesn't work, it doesn't function. It's too expensive to repair. It's a giant paperweight. We're getting rid of it. That was the full comparison between our brand new Thomas bus and our old Bluebird. We are super excited that we got this bus and the fact that it was from a certified school bus mechanic who bought it for himself is the cherry on top. I mean, 35,000 miles, we feel super good about our purchase. We have a reliable engine and we're ready for the build. We can't wait to bring you guys new parts. Let's start this schoolie journey in the new year.